Activate Your Introvert, the weekly show to help leaders build performance by understanding introversion. In this week's show, Introvert Myth of the Week, Introverts Don't Like Other People. Leadership Tip of the Week, Homeworking, Office Working or Hybrid, What Things Should You Consider? And a discussion with Hilary Salisbury. Hilary is a director at HSHR Services Limited, with over 25 years' experience working in senior HR roles in large corporate public sector organisations, and now brings that experience to smaller businesses. Just before speaking to Hilary, I'd love your help, and there may even be a reward in it for you. There are two things I would like you to do for me. Number one, give me a question. What's your question about introversion, leadership and performance? Every week I answer one question and invite the owner of the question onto the show. To ask your question, go to activateyourintrovert.co.uk where there's a box near the top of the page. You can then choose if you want to ask it live or not. Number two, press pause. If you're enjoying understanding more about introversion and leadership from this show, I want you to help others who might benefit too. You can help by pausing this recording, going to iTunes and adding your hopefully, five-star review. The iTunes algorithm should then help more people find the show, especially if you do it this week before the 30th of June, as I'm picking one reviewer each day and sending them a copy of my book, Running Meetings That Make Things Happen. So, press pause. Thank you. Interesting discussion I saw in the news this week is about pay rates for people that work at home, apparently. Facebook has announced it will allow employees to work from home permanently, but it will lower the salaries of those that do if they relocate to a cheaper area. It did evoke some reaction. What are your thoughts? My read of the statement is that they don't want to pay less if you work from home, but we will pay less if you choose to be further away from the office. Does that imply an underlying desire to have people in the office? Or that they're worried about people not wanting to come in for occasional face-to-face meetings because of distance. I don't know, and I'm trying to get a legal or HR expert onto the show for next week to explore this further. What about you? Have you thought through what people and activities worked well in home working during the pandemic? And what activities would be better in the office? Have you also considered the different types of people, introvert and extrovert? One very effective time of my working life is when I was based at home, but only six miles from the office, and I could easily go in, depending on who I needed to talk to and what I was trying to achieve. Alan in Wimbledon asked, Why don't the introverts in my team speak up in meetings? Alan, I don't know about your meetings. However, researching for running meetings that make things happen and discussions with many introverts suggest there's probably a couple of things going on and a few things you can do to help. Psychological safety is a massive subject and partly behind some of the points I'll raise in a moment. I'm also going to get a psychological safety expert onto the show soon. But basically, it's where people don't feel safe to join in. Introverts tend to use internal processing, which means they think to talk. This can lead to a slower answer coming forth, but a more detailed and more structured one than many external processing extroverts who talk to think. I've known many people who are thinking about a well-structured answer be ridiculed in meetings, where people giving fast answers get praised, even when the answer doesn't relate to the data. That's not going to help anybody speak up. What's more, it encourages more of the same behaviour and can become a spiral. Two things can help. One, hold back the louder voices. Allow the quieter ones to speak. Two, sometimes use other ways to answer. Writing on a card or a poll in an electronic meeting and get the questions and data distributed well before the meeting. I hope that answered your question, Alan. I've got a question for you. What's it like to live in Wimbledon as we head towards that fortnight? What's your introversion question? I'd love you to be on the show to ask it. Whether you want to be on air or not, go to activateyourintrovert.co.uk 
where there's a box for you to ask your question. Also, follow the Facebook page, Activate Your Introvert, to discuss the answers. Now, it's time to talk to Hilary. Welcome, Hilary. Thank you, John. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. And we're going to talk about your HR experience and where you've worked with leaders and, and how that links perhaps onto performance and introversion. But just before we dive into that, are you an introvert, an extrovert? And more importantly, what does that mean to you? So I would say I, I'm not extreme. I'm not an extreme introvert or extrovert. I'm probably more introverted than extrovert, although can be extrovert when I need to be. So Mm. sort of put on that mask, that face when I am required to do so. And that's probably the years I've spent in HR needing to manage really difficult situations where you've, you've got to step out and be quite dominant in those situations. Um, But that's not my natural place I'm naturally okay. quite an introverted person and that's really interesting for two reasons number one is you brought out this thing that the whole thing is a spectrum it's not you are this or you are that you could be a, a small amount extroverted introverted or a lot but secondly as you just said although you are at your core somewhere towards the introvert end you have learned a lot of tactics what can make you appear can work differently in other situations where you need to which is fantastic. And I think that applies to us all. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah. I, I, but I appreciate that for some people, that's really difficult, that mm. learning those tactics takes takes a long time. And you have to have a level of self-confidence to be able mm. to behave in a way that's not natural to you. It's not the natural way you would behave. It can be quite uncomfortable. Absolutely. And I think the other thing that's interesting with that is although you and I can go and behave slightly differently to our preference, it doesn't mean that that's where we're going to, we're going to get more exhausted there. We're going to get more tired in that, in that position. So long-term performance won't be as good. You've got over 25 years of HR expertise and working with leaders in large organizations. What are the biggest things you do to help improve performance in those places? They're really making leaders sit back and think about their leadership style and how they use that to bring the best out of their teams. I think over my years of experience, what I've learned is leaders can't just have one style. So they can't apply the same leadership to every single person in their team because every single person is different. So they need to adapt their leadership style to get the best out of everybody in their team. And particularly talking about introvert, you have to encourage them to have a voice. And what I tend to find in my career is that introverted people are often some of the most creative people in a team. Mm -hmm. They don't push themselves forward. So you have to draw, spend time drawing that creativity out of them. And that takes effort. But equally, if you don't do that, what you tend to find happens is they will very quickly start to disengage from being part of the team. I think that's a really good point. I've heard many leaders say to those introverts that don't just speak up naturally, what's wrong with just telling them to speak up more? Because that makes them feel really uncomfortable. That's not their natural way of doing things. Extroverted people quite are quite happy to dominate a conversation often, dominate a team meeting, which I've seen. A leader's job is to make sure that every team member is included. And with introverted people, that, that can be more of a challenge. How well do you think leaders understand introversion? I think it depends what their natural tendency is so I think if leaders naturally tend to be introverts themselves then they're more likely to encourage other introverts in the team to speak up I think if leaders are extroverts my experience has been sometimes it's more difficult 
for them to understand what it's like to be an introvert and and how that feels. Just before the show, while we were off air, you were talking to me about the three A's that you use to help people focus on performance. Absolutely. So with, with a lot of businesses that I work with now and through my corporate career, I would get pulled into a situation where there was a difficulty with an employee who was seen to be not performing as they should perform. Once I drilled down into what was really going on, I talk about the three A's and the three A's are autonomy, authority and accountability. Quite often what I found was we were trying to hold people accountable for things that they have no authority or autonomy to deliver. So it's almost impossible to hold people accountable And I found that particularly in the small, medium sized businesses that I'm supporting now. And a lot of that is you've got a business owner who's created this business from nothing. It's becoming really successful. They're employing people. They find it really hard to let go. Mm. So they're not getting the authority and the autonomy right with their people and then wonder why they're struggling to hold people accountable for not delivering what they want them to deliver. How should they go about fixing that? really thinking clearly about what job do you want this person to do and what does that look like and how much are you prepared to let go because that's what it boils down to whilst you still retain the responsibility for delivery you've got to let go of some of the authority and that autonomy and let that person get on and also rather than What I found with a lot of managers or leaders is that they will be directive about the inputs to achieve the outcome rather than being specific about what outcome they need and then letting the individual determine how that outcome is achieved. Brilliant. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. One quick question, then I'm going to ask you for a couple of tips. What's more important, performance or people? People are more important. So your role is about helping leaders to get the most from their people. Absolutely. And the reason I say that, John, is in a lot of cases, without people, there is no business because people deliver the business. Absolutely. I always ask my guests for a tip for an introvert. Perhaps it's an introvert who, as you said earlier, has a leader that's not encouraging them to speak up. How could they change things? Find somebody that will support you to put your point across. So if there's somebody within the team that you feel more comfortable talking to, talk to them about what your ideas are and get some support. So almost align your allies. That's a great tip. Yeah, I like that. Because particularly in a meeting situation, that can be huge if you know you've got that support of an individual or a couple of individuals who are happy to challenge, are happy to say, no, wait a minute, I think John's got something really important to say here. Mm. So find some support. Love it. And how about a leader that perhaps is a non-introvert? One simple tip that could help them to get more performance from their team? Take some time to sit back and think about who the people in your team are and how you can really get the best out of them. So if you have introverts in your team, spend some time with them where they talk and you listen and you don't interrupt them and you don't talk over them and you don't criticise and put down their ideas. You just listen. I like that a lot because I don't see enough listening going on. Hilary, I've loved chatting. I'm absolutely convinced that some of the listeners will want to get back in touch with you. What's the best way of doing that? Okay, so they can visit my website, which is hjshrservices.com, or they can contact me through social media. Fantastic. So I'm on social media as Hilary Salisbury and they can easily contact me on social media. That's brilliant. And what I'll do as well, I'll put a link to the website in the show notes so they can just click on that. Hilary, it's been brilliant to talk. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you, John. And now it's time for Introvert Myth of the Week. Those crazy stories that I hear and you hear. 
that some people actually believe. Introverts have low self-esteem. Wrong. The two are not the same thing at all. If you're an introvert listening to this, you might have low self-esteem, and that's horrible. But you shouldn't blame being introverted. As a manager, don't assume an introvert has low self-esteem. Introverts are not quiet or reserved because they have low self-esteem or lack self-confidence. People with low self-esteem may feel they are people without any particular skills or value. That's not about being introverted. However, people, especially children, who receive constant feedback from peers that something is wrong with their personality, perhaps because they're introverted, just might start to question themselves as a result. Helping somebody deal with low self-esteem might include things like recognising their feelings, being a good listener and being supportive, including them and asking for their help. Encouraging introverts on your team might include some of the same things, listening rather than talking over them. Helping them be heard in meetings may sound like being supportive, but it's much more about structuring the meeting so everybody can participate. Asking one-to-one for an introvert's help may be a good thing, but only do it if you're going to listen and discuss openly. If, having listened, you then do the opposite without explanation, it's not going to help. But that's not about introversion. Nobody likes being asked for help, then ignored without explanation. I'm John Baker. Thank you for listening. I hope you found it useful. There's a new episode every Thursday at activateyourintrovert.co.uk and your favourite podcast provider. Till then, go be introversial, activating your introverts, building your business.